This mini lecture is on the experimental method. The experimental method is our only research method that we can use to identify cause and effect relationships. All the other methods simply describe what is happening. In our experimental method, we have two different types of variables. The first one, our independent variable, is a factor or condition that we are going to deliberately manip manipulate to determine whether it causes any change in another behavior or condition. Our dependent variable is a factor condition that we are going to measure at the end of our experiment. So we will purposely do something to our independent variable to see what effect it will have on our dependent variable. Look at some examples. First, do people with pink shirts get more job interviews? Our independent variable would be the shirt color. Our dependent variable would be the number of interviews. What effect does caffeine have on memory? Our independent variable is caffeine. Our dependent variable would be memory. Scores on tests improve with time spent studying. This one is written backwards from the other two. Our independent variable would be the time spent studying and our dependent variable is the score on the test. And our last one, does aggression increase with the consumption of alcohol? Our independent variable is the consumption of alcohol, and our dependent variable is the level of aggression. If you have not yet, there's a very interesting study in Chapter 1 concerning this topic. We also have two different groups within the experimental method. The first is our experimental group. This is a group that is exposed to our independent variable, so they receive the treatment. And our control group is our group that's exposed to all the other same experimental environment, but they are not given the treatment. The only difference between our experimental and our control group is that our experimental group gets the treatment or the independent variable the control group does not. Looking at our same examples again, do people with pink shirts get more job interviews than those with white shirts? Our experimental group would be the group of interviewers that wear the pink shirts. Our control group would wear the plain white shirt. And in the example, what effect does caffeine have on memory? Our experimental group would have caffeine. Our control group would have no caffeine. All other factors would be the same. Some things that we need to look out for when using the experimental method. First is the confounding variables. These are the factors other than the independent variable that can have an effect on our results. If we look at the pink shirt example again, some examples of confounding variables for that experiment could be the style of the shirt, whether it's been ironed or not, whether the person has had a haircut or needs a haircut, have they shaved, are they showered, what type of, what type of experience do they have, do they have a good handshake, what time of the day it is, whether they're male or female, we could go on and on. So the confounding variables are all those other factors. And the hard part about setting up an experiment is trying to control as many of these as possible. Another possible problem is in picking our participants. Selection bias is when our participants are assigned to groups in such a way that there are systematic differences between the groups. For example, if we put in an ad, tell people to show up at a certain time, as they show up, we put all the males in one group females in the other group. We have a systematic difference between the two groups. One is all male, one is all female. Uh, that could affect the outcome of our study. We can control this by using random assignment, and the easiest analogy for this is picking names out of a hat. So everybody's name is in the hat. Everybody has an equal chance of being put in either group A or group B. Okay, another possible problem is the placebo effect. And this is when a person's response to a treatment is caused by their expectations and not the treatment itself. A placebo 
is a fake treatment that appears to be real. The one most people are familiar with is a sugar pill. If you sign up for a study, you're told you're only taking a sugar pill, well, you're going to expect that you're not going to get better because you're only taking a sugar pill. So your expectations are going to affect the outcome. We control this by using what we call a blind study. When you sign up for the study, you're not told whether you're in the experimental group or the control group. Therefore, your expectations cannot affect the outcome because you don't know whether you're receiving the real treatment or not. Okay, also could find that the experimenter's biases could affect the outcome. Say we have a researcher that is developing a new drug, spend a lot of time and a lot of money um, into researching this new drug. They're in the testing phase. They want to see that drug get passed. And although they may not purposely try to influence the outcomes, their expectations just unconsciously could affect what happens. So what we can do to control that happening is using what we call a double blind. And that is where the experimenter doesn't know who's in the experimental or the control group and the participants don't know. Once the study is done, the, the groups will be unsealed and you'll find out who was in what group.